Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video for Honeybee Stamps. Today we are going to be making this kind of fun arch trifold card. I am using the Layering Wisteria, the Layering Wisteria add-on, and the Kaleidoscope 3D embossing folder. So first things first, I'm going to stamp a lot of Wisteria. <laughs> um, I kept seeing these beautiful like arches. Uh, when I was looking at images of Wisteria and I was like, I really want to recreate that. I really think that those little arches are beautiful. And so that is kind of how this came about. So first things first, it's not a no line coloring look because I am using a darker ink, but it's not a bold black outline either. So I chose to stamp them in the colors in which they were going to be colored for just a little bit of a softer look. And if you're like me where no line coloring can sometimes be a bit overwhelming or a bit time consuming, this is a great trick. For true no line coloring, you want to use a color that is the same color as the colors you will be coloring, or one that will disappear. Um, Honeybee has one that is a no-line coloring ink that will genuinely look like it is hand-drawn or hand-colored, painted, you know what I'm saying. Um, this will not give that same look, but it will be a bit softer than a bold black outline. So first, I stamp down my Wisteria, one big, two little, and then I'm going to stamp in the uh, vine and the leaves. And I'm doing the same thing. I picked a green that was just a little bit darker than the colors I was going to be using. And the reason that I chose to go a little bit darker is because then I don't lose my lines. And my lines help me to know where to put my shadows when I'm coloring. <laughs> so that is why I chose not to do the no line coloring look because I was trying to get this done in somewhat of a timely fashion. So now I've stamped two of these panels that you see here. I'm only going to show you the coloring of just a couple of the items. Um, first things first, I'm going to go in with my greens and I am going to do the um, like the stem portion of the plant. And then I'm also going to do my leaves toward the bottom as well as in the center of the flowers. The center of the flowers are almost like a lime green, like a bright greenish yellow. And so I will be filling those in as well. I didn't add any shading to those. I didn't really feel like they needed any, but by all means you could definitely add in that shading. I did add a little bit of shading to the stem portion or the like vine. Um, because it, you could see so much of it, it just felt like it needed it. I did start with my darkest color though first, knowing that I had very little real estate to work with here and I didn't want to risk them kind of bleeding out into my white space because normally, you guys know, I color my white outline and get rid of it. In this card, I didn't. I kept my white outline and that is because I had a white background. <laughs> um, as far as the leaves go, I'm going to start with my uh, darkest color to preserve those lines. So I'm going to go in and lay in my darkest shadows first and then work towards my lightest color. If you are heavy handed, by all means, start with your lightest color. You just want to make sure that you're, when you start, you're starting laying in the shadows. So you don't just want to color it all one color because you will absolutely blow out your lines and then you'll, it will be more difficult to get your shading accurate to the way that the stamp is drawn. Is this important for every single stamped image you color? No, it's not. Uh, sometimes we color things that are a little bit more whimsical. Um, sometimes we color things where maybe the depth and dimension isn't necessarily what we're going for. Um, but when you are trying to create that depth and dimension, you want to make sure whatever color you're starting with, you're starting putting down your shadows. So now that that leaf is colored, I'm going to move on to one of the vines and then we will switch over to coloring the flowers. Um, was this video supposed to be up earlier? Yes. Yes, it was. <laughs> yes, it was. Um, but my children don't care about my timeline. Just to be clear, um, nowhere in the toddler playbook does it say mommy accomplishes things or daddy accomplishes things because <laughs> it doesn't even register on their radar that we have other things to accomplish besides taking care of them. So now all of the leaves and the vine is colored, same color combination. I've also filled in all the greens on the flowers and then I'm going to start coloring the flowers. Do not be afraid by all of the colors I have showed you. <laughs> um, so Wisteria 
can be bluish purple, like a blue violet. It can be purple purple. It can be pink purple. Uh, it can be a lot of different things. And I have used this stamp before. This is a little bit of an older stamp set from Honeybee, but I think it's beautiful. And I see no reason not to continue using it. <laughs> um, so here I have decided that I'm going to make them purple purple, but I pulled out the blue violet marker and the blue marker so that I could create some color variation really easily. So going in, I am starting in the center of each flower and I'm putting down my darkest shadows. This because there's so many flowers, okay, a lot of us can look at this and be like, this is going to take forever. Um, and I colored six of them. So it did take me a little bit of time. But doing like starting with the darkest color and then working out to my lightest color cut my time in half because I was not having to go over it twice. And because these are so small, images that are smaller always blend easier because you don't have to put down as much ink to cover such a large area they blend really easily because you're putting ink on top of ink and that's how uh, alcohol markers blend. They blend in the fibers of the paper. So when you're putting like each color I'm putting down, I'm overlapping the previous color. So I'm essentially putting down almost the same amount of ink. I'm just not going back and doing it two times, saving me a little bit of time. So this is my second mid-tone and it's my second lightest to color. So you can see when I'm going through here, there is still some white that is left behind, but it is very little. In fact, if I didn't even add my fourth color, I'm not sure anybody would really even notice. They may just think the white is my highlight. However, because we are overlapping the colors as we're laying them down, the alcohol markers are transparent and lighter colors will remove a little bit of the darker color. Um, it's not necessarily removing, but that's the easiest way to explain it. Um, basically, it, oh, how do I want to say it? It, um, it kind of pushes it back a little bit. And so because of that, going over the flower with the lightest color is going to blend everything together a bit nicer. And it's also going to make the edges where they meet blend really easily. So now that the whole thing is colored purple, you could totally leave it like this. But if you like color variation, like I do, I chose a blue and a blue violet to go in and I'm just going to hit up certain petals. I went in with the blue violet first and then laid that down and then went in with the blue, which is much bolder, um, and laid that down. You could also swap out your blue for a pink or you could use a blue and a pink. Um, and you can color these with whatever. I've colored these with stereo with colored pencils. I have colored them. Um, I did a video that was, I only used seven Copic markers and I colored these. Um, so there's, it's very easy to get color variation by just putting a color over top of what you've already colored. I wanted to show you that this works both ways. You can start with your base color. Like if you don't want the blue to be quite so in your face. You can start with it as your base color because the color that you put on top will be the color that is more noticeable. It will be more tinted blue or more tinted purple. So if you want one that's just, you're still going to see the blue because this is a pretty bright blue. Um, but if you wanted it to be just a little bit less blue and more purple. First of all, you could go with a lighter color blue, but you can also put it down first. So in this version, I put down the blue violet and the blue down first, and then I will color my purple over top of it the same way that I did with the other one. And they will look very similar. You can do it in whichever order you prefer. I will say with the blue violet, it was almost not noticeable. <laughs> like it was almost too uh, violet and not enough blue uh, when I colored on top of it. But nonetheless, I did want to show you both ways. Um, so yeah, my kids, my, I shouldn't say my kids, my youngest child, um, she has a little bit of a cold, which I am very empathetic. We made it through the whole month of February without her really getting sick, but that's because she was with our parents instead of being in daycare. Um, and then now this is the first week of March, first week we're back in full-time daycare and she's already got a cold. It's so exhausting. Not, I mean, and she's not 
Like it's definitely not as bad as it could be. There's no fever. She's eating good. She just, she has a runny nose and a cough. Um, but the runny nose and the cough is s making it so it's difficult for her to sleep. And I am totally, you guys know my allergies act up all the time. My sinuses are a mess. Um, so I am super empathetic to her situation because there are plenty of times where I have a hard time sleeping because my nose is stuffed up and I can't breathe or I'm super congested. Um, or I have like mad drainage. Like there's there's times I wake myself up snoring because I'm so <laughs> I'm so congested. <laughs> Um, there's also times my husband wakes me up while he is snoring and he has no congestion. So explain that one to me. But nonetheless, um, one of the many <laughs> joys of being married. Um, but so she just, she has not been sleeping good this weekend at all. So this video was definitely supposed to be up earlier, but it just didn't happen. So she... Friday night, she got up at like 2.30 in the morning and Eric got up with her and he said he wasn't sure what time she fell back asleep because he fell asleep in the rocking chair. Um, so when he woke back up, she was asleep and then he made his way back to bed. Last night, she woke up at about 11.30 and then I think I got into bed at like quarter to two. Um, and then she did, she took a really good nap today, which was helpful. And like, we're running the humidifier, you know, with the little Vicks in there to help with her congestion. Um, you know, we're, we're doing what we can. If it seems like she, you know, is having some pain or is uncomfortable, we're doing the Tylenol as needed. Like we're doing what we can, but basically just, you know, with kids this age, you just have to ride out the cold. But because of that, it meant that we got none of our things done that we are, that we need to do on the weekend. So I sent my mom a text this morning and I was like, hey, she hasn't even laid down for her nap yet. But when she gets up from it, would you like to watch your granddaughter? <laughs> would you like to watch your granddaughter? Um, and so we were able to take her over there for a couple of hours, which is like, benefit to us. Eric can do what he needs to do. I can do what I need to do. And she gets some quality time with her grandparents. So win, win, win for everybody involved. Um, so here now all of the coloring is done. I am going to cut these out with their companion dies. And because I have two sheets, I'm basically just going to lay down the dies wherever they will fit. Um, and cut them at the same time and then readjust which dies are on which ones because some of them like the leaves are stamped a little bit too close to the wisteria for both of them to fit um which is okay so i went through i cut all of these out in addition to cutting these out we're also going to do the cuts for the card as well as the embossing so there's no specialty dies needed for this as far as like anything intricate for a fold. We're going to cut a eight and a half by 11 inch piece of paper in half vertically at four and a quarter. This would be like your normal regular card base. Um, so I will just put this in here. I'm going to use my honeybee bone folder to score it at five and a half. And then I will fold it like a regular card front but then I'm gonna cut it. So I'm gonna line up my little ends. I'm going to just kind of rub that down with my finger and then really push it into place with the edge of my bone folder and then reopen it. With it reopened, and you wanna make sure the cut edge is on the inside so that you have a very nice card front. But now I'm gonna use, this is the biggest circle from the stacking circles. I'm gonna use that to cut out my arch. You can put it down as far as you would like. This was sufficient for me. I knew I was going to have some of the wisteria hanging down below it, but this will give you an arch. You could do this for any floral. I mean, you could do this for any stamp set that you wanted. It's just going to create a hinged arch. With the other side of the paper, I am going to, again, you want to do the cut side up so everything is nice on the outside. I'm going to go in, I am going to score at five and a half. I will fold that over again, and then I am going to put this into the 3D embossing folder. You could not make it a trifold, and you could just use the arch like to hide where you wanted to write your message and just leave it like that kind of open card. But because I wanted to do the 
the texture of the 3D embossing folder, I needed mine to be a trifold. You could also skip the 3D embossing folder and just adhere the like the card base the same way um, and you wouldn't have any texture on the front at all. But so I'm just going to line this up with the edge where I folded it and then I will feed everything through. For the circle portion, it because it's overhangs the card front, it's going to cut off the rest of it, all the rest of it. Uh, and then I will just set that aside because I'm I'm not wasting paper, you guys know me, <laughs> I'm not wasting my supplies. Um, I'm going to use it to stamp the sentiment, but here is the arch there where it kind of folds up and then you will see that only one side of this has the embossing and then I will flip it upside down and feed that in so they will be adhered together on the back and then they will open the embossing part will open down and the arch part will open up um, and then you will have your message inside. So I spent the time to lay down all of the wisteria over the arch portion. Uh, that's what you see me doing here. I'm not sure what's going on with my camera there. I'm, I apologize for that. You know, just putting in some vines and some leaves, trying to break up a little bit of that color. And once I am happy with the way that it is looking, I know it's overhanging the top edge. It's okay. I'm going to trim that off. Um, but so once I'm happy with all of it, then I'm going to get my press and seal. And I already have taped down my card base. I am going to do the hinge method method for this. So I'm going to press it down to my glass mat. I am then going to press it down on top of my die cuts and I will pick it all up as one piece. Normally I would go in and I would do the gluing to whatever um like the little what, whatever the most back portion of it was is where I would put my glue and then I would fold it over and I would glue those down I cannot do that with this because some of the little parts that are all underneath do not touch my archway so instead I'm going to use my honeybee precision glue I'm going to put glue all over my archway because I know that's going to be entirely covered up with die cuts and then I will pull my press and seal back over and I will adhere those die cuts down to the glue. Now, I know this means I'm going to have to go in and I did have a little bit of problems lifting it up. I, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I, I just, I believe in being transparent. And sometimes things don't always work out exactly the way that you think they will. So I did have a little bit of a problem kind of lifting it back up. Here, this leaf down here at the bottom, I know is not attached to anything. So I'm going to put a little bit of glue before I start messing with anything else to adhere it to the branch that's coming down. And then I'm just going to work my way across the entire image from right to left gluing things or leaves whatever as I need to in order for them to stay in place this I think is where maybe I had my issue so I put the glue down and then as I was lifting the press and seal it started actually removing a portion of my stamped image on the vine so that's what you see me trying to fix here it did take, you can see it there, it did take just a little tiny piece of it, not enough that it was noticeable, um, but I've never had press and seal do that before. So the only thing that I can think of is that possibly I got some glue on it and didn't realize. But then the only thing that I had that didn't that didn't stick down was the one in the center and I was like that's fine I'll just leave it on the press and seal and come back to it and now I'm going to go through and just make sure everything is super secure on my um, little archway here that everything matches up the way that I want it to and is you know not going to go anywhere this does mean that you can see some of the wisteria on the back side when you open it that doesn't bother me, but if it bothers you, you could cut more die cuts in white or another fun color that matches if you, you would prefer, but you could cut them in white and then it would make and just adhere them to the back and it would make the whole back just solid white. Um, but it doesn't bother me for people to be able to see my coloring on the other side. So 
Again, just going through, checking and making sure everything is adhered the way that it should be so it's not going to go anywhere. I did notice this little piece of the archway, just the tiniest little triangle uh, you could see. And so I went in and just trimmed that off so that it was flush with the die cut that was on top of it. Um, and then here I noticed up here the little leaves uh, were not as secure as I would like them to be. So I went in and did that. You, I prefer, this is just me, you don't have to do this. I prefer to put a little bit of repositionable adhesive like on the very edges of my cards when they have like, when they're a trifold card so that they'll stay closed. This works twofold for me, one, so I can actually take photos. And two, um, so that they stay together when the recipient pulls them out of the envelope. However, if you did not want to put positionable, repositionable adhesive on the underside of it to make sure it laid flat, you could either just put it in the envelope and let it lay there for quite some time, or you could put something heavy on top of it, which would, you know, secure it being held down. In order to put together the rest of it, we are going to put glue on the opposite side of the embossed folder. So we have it upside down. We're going to put the glue on that and then we'll line up the edge of the card that we already have with the arch on it with the embossing. So this back section is going to have two layers of cardstock and then the embossed portion will fold up, the arch will fold down, and that will be how the card opens and closes. This is the sentiment I chose. Before you come for me that it is March and I'm making Mother's Day cards, I am one of three girls. So I have two sisters and two mamas to make Mother's Day cards for. So if any time that I can start knocking these things out a little bit early, I am here for it. I chose to stamp my sentiment in a navy um, because I thought that it was a good compliment. I could have stamped it in the purple for sure, um, but I liked the navy better because blue is my boyfriend. <laughs> so here I'm using its coordinating die. The nice thing about this coordinating die is it cuts out each one of the words as individuals. So I was able to kind of stack them up into that archway so that they look really nice together. And then once I had them in place, I just picked them up with my tweezers and put them down with my glue. So anywho, baby girl is sick. She's not sleeping. Um, so this weekend was a little bit rough. Uh, in other first world problems, uh, my groceries have not arrived yet again, uh, which is a real problem because Eric and I are trying to make healthier choices uh, in our life and the way that we're eating. And um, because of that, we need to meal prep. That is we need to meal prep on Sundays for the week. And last week I was able to do that um, with what we had in the household. But like this week we're trying, well, he wants to try some different recipes, which is great. Uh, so he was going to do the meal prep for this week, but we can't do that because our groceries were supposed to be here between 11 a.m. and 12 p.m. And it is now 5.30 p.m. and they have not come. So yes, I called. No, they had no answers for me. So here I used the Ocean Waves pearls. Um, and originally I used the white, but I actually didn't love them. So I'm adding some shimmer to the flowers. And then I'm going to go back and I'm going to take off all those pearls that I have on there. And I'm going to use the ones that are like, I don't know, they're like iridescent. They're like pink and pinkish blue. And I did like those much better. I felt like it popped off from the white background a little bit more than the white ones did. And I was happier with the way that those looked. Those pearls will be the finish of the card. So just one more time showing you how it opens and closes. This is just kind of a fun little something that you can put together for a different look. Uh, I hope that you guys learned a little bit of something and that you are inspired to give it a try, whether it's the fold of the card or the coloring. Um, I just, I genuinely hope that you are inspired to get into your craft room. So thank you guys so much for joining me. I always appreciate your time and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.